Hey guys, uh, we're going to go over some data logging review and some uh, little add-on features and whatnot inside of data logging that it seems like a lot of people um, haven't really grasped. So uh, I want to I want to preface this by the uh, these are two passes that I made with my personal car. Uh, the first time I brought it out in about three years. So disregard. Uh, what you see for RPM trace and whatnot. We don't need to have a whole bunch of conversations about that. This is more just for educational purposes. So um, what we're going to do is we, we open up the data log or the uh, global folder that we had loaded in the car when we made the pass. Okay. So I always name them, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever's uh, applicable for what you're using, right? And we're going to go to data log and then open a data log. It's going to populate a whole bunch of different data logs that you have saved in your folder. So we're going to open up the first one, which uh, I just named test one, and we're going to open that up. <clears throat> so this, this is the entire uh, time that it data logged, right? So the the first thing that I, I typically like to do right when I open up a data log is uh, I left click, hold, and I highlight, you know, just the run, right? So, because this is all we really care about. I mean, we can check D cell stuff, you know, um, but uh, but for now, what we like to look at is just the run, um, and we made two passes. I, I made two passes with the car. Um, the other night, so uh, like I showed in my other video, we're going to compare the two, right? So the first thing we do is we're going to open up the comparison. So right here, this tab, open up comparison data log, and then uh, grab test two. That's the second pass we made. Now you'll notice over here before I before I click on that, you notice over here there's there's only one of each, right? When I open up the comparison, do. -do, -do we have, we have two values, right? For everything, we have two values, okay? So, um, for, so we're going to zoom back in here, right? And you notice that we have two traces up, which is RPM. So, this first trace, the solid line, is your first pass that you made, or first data log that you opened. And then your second trace is jagged, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's slotted or dotted, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's the second one that you open, okay? So if you notice, we're looking at this. Anybody who races knows that this is absolutely atrocious looking for, for RPM trace. Uh, I didn't have any power in this thing. Um, that's why it's doing what it's doing. So uh, if you notice, you know, 16 pounds of boost, 12 pounds of boost is, you know, Again, don't judge this by what it is. Judge it for its uh, informational purposes. So, um, some people have asked me, well, why does your background look different than mine? Why does you know your color is different than mine? So I figure we'll, we'll go over that real quick. Um, the uh, if you double click anywhere here, right, it pops up this customization uh, panel. Right? So let's just go through all of it, right? Um, border style, as you change it, it'd be around the border, but we have it on, we have a different subset set up. So uh, let's go to plot. Um, you can change the plot for each and every one of these if you want shadow, 3D, yada, yada. If you want different styles here, Right, you can change it here. So if we wanted to change RPM um, to bar or line or points, whatever it may be. So uh, this is really what what most people want to know about is colors. So um, right now the desk foreground, right, is white. So let's just change that. Notice it's changing the changing the print color, right? So. I'm like half blind at night, so I like them pretty bright and obnoxious colors, so it's easy to see. And then the background is white, so um, at night that might be easy to see. Uh, during the day or when it's bright, it's kind of hard to see. So we change it to black. So 
Right now we've got a black background and we got a green print, right? And then graph foreground is here, right? This background color. So we can change this. So you see all the different graph lines, right? So we can modify them to be whatever color we want, um, or we can just, you know, leave them white. And then the background is there. So obviously if you pick the same color for the background as your trace, you're not going to see anything. So black typically works pretty good. And then there's also some, um, some pre-canned stuff that they set up for you here. So these are all the light options, medium and dark. So uh, that's the that's the first thing, right? So what I like to do typically is set it to dark, and then when you go to style, you can change your your color and your line type. So. Um, it's, it sometimes gets a little confusing when you have a whole bunch of stuff stacked on top of each other. So I like to typically make the the uh, the, the first data log opened um, a little bit more defined, right? So there we go. We just increased it here. And um, if we wanted to increase RPM right now, it's here. We could move it to here. So it's a lot more defined, right? It's a little easier to see. Uh, same thing with ignition timing. And anytime you see a C after it, that's for the comparison folder, right, or the comparison log that we're looking at, okay? So uh, in this log, we're going to look at, um, let's see, boost. We're going to make that one pretty profound. Boost comparison, same thing right there. And here is where we could change the color if we wanted, you know, boost to be red um, in the comparison and... You know, keep it red in the uh, in the standard, or purple, whatever you want to do. So you can make them both purple. That'll be good. Now, um, hit OK. Let's pull boost up right there. Now they're purple, right? So it's a little bit easier to see. They're bright. Uh, you know, depending on what your your background is uh, behind it. Now, if you notice that this is in a second panel. Right? So I did this before I started the video. Um, if you, if you kind of get a little overwhelmed, you can double click here on boost, right? This is the standard way of doing things. This is the way boost would lay up, right? So boost would lay here, and then we can scale boost. We can change the scaling here to 20, and now it brings it more in line with our curve. Now, you're probably asking why it changed, but we went to a second panel, so we can change that back. Style, boost, we'll change it to purple, both purple. Make the lines, whoops, hold on. Make the line type a little bit more profound. There we go. So there we go. So now, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to see, it's a lot easier to, to look over um, when you're, you know, if you're in a rush or whatnot at, at the track, it's easy, it's easier to just glance at and see. So um, a couple of things that I don't think that I've talked about in other videos is, uh, you know, changing the panel. So if we want to, if we don't want to get cluttered up here, right, so we've got boost and we've got RPM, now we want to put drive shaft speed up here. The drive shaft speed is a little bit hard to see, but it's now starting to overlap here, right? So we can double click drive shaft speed, put it in panel two, and there's drive shaft speed, okay? So uh, a lot of people uh, like multiple panels. It's a little bit easier to read and it'll follow, right? So like wherever you click here, we'll also click here. Time is also accurate on both panels, right? So your, your, uh, your line goes straight up through here, your zero point. Um, I talked about setting the zero point before, uh, you know, for the release of the trans brake, but I'll show you again. 
So uh, automatically set zero time, click here. When trans break is less than one, hit OK. And your comparison zero time, trans break less than one. So now they line up. Okay, so now notice it zoomed out, we see the whole log again. We zoom back in, there we go. Now if we want to drive shaft speed, back into panel one, there we go. We'll change color because we changed panels. So if we want to make drive shaft speed a little bit easier to see, style, drive shaft speed. Let's make that Jesse a little bit brighter. Hit OK. All right. So now we've got drive shaft speed, we've got boost, we've got RPM. Well, boost is uh, not necessary anymore. So let's compare it to drive shaft speed. So what most people do when they're trying to figure out if their converter is slipping or not is they tab over here towards what they think is the end of the run and they compare this drive shaft speed number right here, right? 64, 63 versus 65, 78. You got to do a little bit of math. Or you can create math channels. All right, so you notice it says converter slip one, converter slip two. Now, we can ditch drive shaft speed if we're, if all we're looking for is converter slip, and there's converter slip two. So notice we're getting down into the, uh, the zero percentage, right? Well, let me show you how to do a math channel. So math channels are up here. Click math channel. Uh, these are already done. So I named converter slip one for first gear. I got a turbo 400, uh, a two-speed turbo 400 in my car. So it's got a 148 first gear, and then high gear is one to one, right? So what in order to set this up, you know, name it, you know, whatever you want, converter, slip high gear, or high, right? So it's <clears throat> minus 100 times. Now notice that there's a parentheses here. So throw one up and then you got to click. So this is something that people seem to miss, right? You don't type in drive shaft speed. You go over here and you find drive shaft speed. So double click it. There we go, it populates it. And then we're subtracting RPM. So come over here, hit, hit minus, and then go over here to RPM, double click. All right, so this equation is happening prior to this equation. That's what the other parentheses is for. Put the end to it right there, and then we are dividing by RPM. And now we're done. So we just hit OK. Uh, I'm not going to do this because I don't need two of them. But reference back to this video so you can figure out how to do the math channel for converter slip. Um, it's kind of nice to have the math channel already, you know, inside of a log so it's easy to reference. Um, then hit OK. <clears throat> so once you have that, uh, you can you can just go back into your edit tab and find your math channel right here. Converter slip one, converter slip two, drag and drop them, you know, wherever you want. So the uh, the other thing that you know I, I went over this in my other video, but you can you can populate all of these boxes to be whatever you want them to be. You can name them whatever you want, um, and then you hit OK and it'll prompt you to save. Something I didn't mention, which is uh, it's kind of slick. Uh, you go to File and you hit Save As. So this is your configs for data logs, right? So I have mine in here. This is what's in here already. I have it saved as Devin one, right? So if this, if I made some radical changes to this, I can change it to Devin two and save. So now it's saved as Devin two, right? So if we wanted to go file open, maybe we're going to go to turbo twin injector sets. We're going to hit open. Look at that. It's completely different, right? Well, if you do multiple cars or, uh, you know, multiple setups, typically what I like, you know, you ask somebody to just email you their config. So let's open up what we're working with. 
and now it's all back to what it was. So if you uh, if you need more than than eight boxes, uh, I I don't see how you could. I think I log just about everything possible, and you know I, I'm not at my limit here. But um, if you if you work with a couple different cars, you know nitrous cars or turbo cars or blower cars, you need some changes. Uh, this is kind of nice to be able to save it. So hit OK. If you have some uh, info that you'd like to put in about whatever run it was, right? So first off, you, you, what you're modifying here is your, your uh, the global file that was in here first pass 2019. That's what we're working off of. That's the global file that was actually in there uh, during this run. And then uh, you can put in statistics for whatever pass it was, you know, ambient temperature, uh, if you have any type of chassis setup info, um, or if you've got any type of stuff from a dyno, and you've got room for uh, miscellaneous. So, like, hey, you know, parameter left lane sucked, information, uh, you know, LS car oil down in front of me, whatever. So, uh, hopefully that explains some of the stuff that people have asked about when it comes to data log review. And uh, there's a ton of math channels out there. Um, I'll, I'll show more of them. Here in the future, it's just I typically only use converter slip because it's all that really, you know, that's all that really uh, seems to, to matter here um, for, for what I do, you know. But um, anyway, that's all I got. Hopefully it, uh, it made sense and hopefully it helps some of y'all.